right now. We played at some of the best and some of the worst. Some of the worst, goddamn. I remember way back there in New York. New York? New York. Do you remember that bar we played at? 47. Barnes. Barnes. I in remember. 47. Barnes. Do you remember when that guy he went through the fucking window? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah I remember. We hadn't even played half our set, had we, boy? We hadn't even got through dog shit on my shoes blues. Well, goddamn, we didn't get half a chance when this asshole gets hit by a truck and comes through a window right in the middle of our song. Oh, yeah. Goddamn, we had agents there. We had women with huge tits. Lusting after our firm young bodies? Now, we're celibate. Now, I'm celibate, but I remember in those days, my eye would turn to a pretty woman. I like tape ears myself. Tape ears? Tape ears. They're little South American creatures. Furry, with a long nose. They're very handy in winter. You are full of facts, aren't you? I mean, is that how you got your inspiration for some of our greatest songs? No, no. I went down to Tierra del Fuego in my youth. Now this is a story I've not told a single living soul. Not a single living soul. Now I was so taken by the words of Charles Darwin that I went to Tierra del Fuego and I meditated on the ways of mankind. I sat out there in that blustery wilderness for weeks. I didn't eat. I didn't shave. I didn't wash. And when I came back... You joined ZZ Top. That's right. That's right. And we went straight to number one, and I got married to Amy Lou, and everything's been just dandy since then. (laughs) 
Where have you been, Byron? Sorry, sorry. I mean, I, I gotta apologize for being late there. I didn't know what to do. Crazy. It's 43 degrees. Those locks will freeze. I tell you, I was getting kind of worried back there for a moment. You weren't on your own. Well, but of course, being resourceful, I soon heated up those little mothers, and everything's just fine now. I just stuck a tape on Byron. Don't worry about it. I'm glad you did. I mean, it was a show that we were gonna run later, but who cares? Got us out of a hole. Well, my pleasure, Byron. Wonderful WBBBBB. Alaska. Good morning. The Cosmic Kid is still with us, and besides writing a book and having a hit record, I understand that you are the president and founder member of a very important preservation society. Yeah, I'm the president of the Save the Krill Fund. The Krill? The Krill bar on a much maligned little creature. That's the thing about it. It's little. People don't even know it's there. But let me tell you, Byron, the average sperm whale eats 89 billion krill every hour. 89 billion? Yep. Every hour? Yep. It's alarming. Very alarming, Byron. I've been with my good friend, Jacques Cousteau, for the last six months. Great man. We had him on the show last year. Lovely, lovely man. On his boat, right, making a film on the subject. I've got it with me today. Great. Let's hear it. I am worried. The admissions this week is to observe the once prevalent, but now seldom seen, grill. This much maligned creature has become a threatened and endangered species. It is like a science fiction story. Animal conquering man, man devouring animal, animal becoming extinct. Such are the ways of the mighty ocean. January the 4th, there is great excitement on board. The Calypso is on yet another mercy mission to save a creature from becoming extinct. Today we are trying to sight a grey whale. We will offer the whale protection against the vultures of industry. My son, Norman Cousteau, is in a hot air balloon for miles above the surface of the ocean. We are trying to contact him now. Normand! Normand! Papa! Oh, I'm gonna die! I can't stop bloody there, Bill! Come inside! January 9th. Entry into the ship's log by Captain Jacques Cousteau. Normand's funeral went off without a hitch. Unfortunately, we could not contact his mother in time. However, we do have some fascinating and wonderful film of his body sinking to the bottom and being ravaged by sharks. Meanwhile, Philippe, my son you know, has spotted a baby gray whale who somehow has become separated from his mother after the collapse had sailed over her. Philippe has joined Dr. Max von Giblet head of marine biology at Death Valley University to try and make a rare recording of the baby whale. Often and alone in the great wide ocean. January 10th, 1986, entry in the captain's log. Philippe is delighted. The Giblers has remixed the recording of the baby whale and the 12-inch has gone straight to number 18 on the network chart. February 24th, 1986. Something wonderful has happened. We have come across a small school of the extremely rare square green squid. It's a chance for the new portable ecology unit to show its colors. Using the brand new preventative techniques recently pioneered by my late son Norman. Meanwhile, on board the Calypso, Chef Jean-Luc Rebier is preparing a special dinner to celebrate the christening of the new ecology unit. He is making squid cocktail, roast squid with two squids and profiter squids with the squid sauce at the all-inclusive price of uh, six squid to you, pal. February 25th, entry into the log of the Calypso. Why? Why didn't... Why didn't someone tell us? Grand squid, it was poisonous! <laughs> Interesting story. Yeah. Anyway, now we come to the highlight of this morning's show, and perhaps it'll become apparent as to why I've had to be so tight on timing today, because we have an exclusive for you, a live by satellite interview with one of the nation's leading politicians, waiting for us down there in our studios in Wilmington, Florida, Howard BD-111. Q, 20 seconds. Uh, Howard, I'm very pleased to be on the show tonight, and I hope you'll stick to the questions. Well, it's 
seen the Johnny Carson show, you know. We kind of like that living. Hello, makeup. Makeup. Is my is my nose looking shiny? You look just fine, girl. You look just fine. Ten Don't seconds, worry. gentlemen. Don't forget, just keep looking at you. Look straight into that lens there and uh, okay. be sincere. Sincerity is what's going to count here. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one, cue. Governor, it's great to have you here tonight. We'd like to present you with something extra special from us. It's a yacht. Why, thank you, Howard. However, as much as I don't want to jeopardize my position or my chances in the forthcoming governorial elections, I am very honored that you've decided to give me this gift. I do not have a problem accepting this kind of award from you. The fact that you've stuffed a million dollars into the inside of my coat pocket does not mean that I owe you a favor. Oh, no, 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 no. That was your lunch tab. We picked it up. Good, good, because I hope the voters will understand when I accept this beautiful yacht on behalf of the community. Oh, sure, yeah. And, of course, the politicians that follow me, my successors, will enjoy full use of this gift. But do you think you'll have any successes, Governor? If you'll excuse me, your political history has been, shall we say, littered with the dead bodies of your opponents? Your tactics are less than subtle. I mean... You shoot people. Look, I think when I introduced capital punishment in schools that I did lose some popularity. Well, how do you feel about the Santa Claus case? Can you explain it? I mean, don't you think that hanging him was a bad decision? I'm not ashamed of what I did. I, I felt he was basically un-American. Why? Because of his red coat or something? Absolutely, because you know what red means, don't you? Uh, no. R-E-D, Russian Expansionist Designs. Really? Yes, and I felt that I was well within my rights as an elected citizen. Yeah, but surely hanging him two days after Christmas, that was a political move. Well, yes, I mean, I didn't want to spoil everybody's holiday. I mean, I realized there were some people who didn't believe in the hanging of Santa Claus, but I just can't understand it when people say that I took took this step lightly. I can assure you I did not. I agonized over this decision for at least five seconds before I agreed to it. Well, Santa Claus was quite a fat guy. Tell me, did you need to use a special kind of rope when you hung him? To tell you the truth, Howard, we used this kind of pretty decorative red rope with little snoopies on it. Oh, it was real cute. That's nice. Yeah, I thought it would look good on television. Now, if the public can accept Christmas without him, I don't envisage any problems. But I mean, what happens next year? Well, I mean, I haven't got any plans to kill anybody next year. Not yet, anyway. No, no, Governor, 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 listen. Don't you feel that the people who are elected into power in our community should enhance the quality of life? Don't you feel that they should contribute to the wealth and wonder of society? Don't you feel they should let Santa Claus live, for example? I mean, do you have children? Well, I mean, yes, yes, I How do. How will I mean, your kids feel when Santa doesn't come down the chimney next year? Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, mean, look, you know. this guy's been around for thousands of years, and you've hung him. Don't you feel responsible for that? Does, does this mean my career could be over? Well, no, I think you're up in the polls, but I'm asking you man to man. Can I say that this little doggy that I have with me here knows that I am telling the truth when I say that I did not mean to hang him. It was somebody else. And this little doggy, little checkerboard here. Say hello to the folks at home, checkerboard. And my wife, Pat, will tell you that I never meant to harm anybody. Hmm. Okay. So what happens next year, Governor? Well, providing that I am once again elected, I'd say it's business as usual. But how are the kids going to get their Christmas presents? I think we can arrange for a well-known sporting personality to take his place. Such as? I mean, who you got in mind? Uh, Chuck Marrero from the Malibu Flakes, or I mean who? Who you got in mind? Well, no, actually, I think Big Dan Dobson from the Seattle Slaughters. Big Dan Dobson, he's going to play Santa Claus this year. Wow, hey, he's never played in that position before, has he? No, he has John, but he weighs 280. He's a third-year rookie and an eighth-round draft choice out of Texas A&M, and he is a big, aggressive kind of Santa Claus, and we're expecting him to have a great season. That's right. He's also a smack addict. His brother plays for the Cleveland Dodgers, ain't it so? Yeah, and he's got a great game. Oh, we are hoping for great things from Dobson. I'm sure he's going to make that all-star Santa Claus game when we do eventually have one in 25 years' time. Hey, that's great, buddy. Yeah, and I think next year, Mary Lou Rutten could make an excellent Santa. Oh, yeah, she's got great tits. Uh, 
Oh, absolutely. Let's face it, one of the prerequisites of being an efficient Santa Claus is great tits. And if you'd like to come around tonight, Mary, that would be just great. I'll see what I can do about getting you that pretty little outfit. So, uh, back to the game. And he's running up the outfit. He's coming up the outfit. He's, he's in trouble. He's got the ball. No, he's dropped the ball. He's passed the ball. Who's he passed it to, Harry? It's been intercepted by Big Stan Blanton of the Washington Foreskins. Okay, he loves noodles. Isn't that right, Harry? Yeah, boy, was he fired up before the game today. I was only speaking to him in the locker room, and he said to me, Boy, am I fired up for this game today, and boy, is he fired up. Yeah? Yeah? What does he use for fuel, brown rice? Hello? Hello? We've lost the line. Hello? Hello? Yeah, yep, okay, okay. All right, I wind up. Yeah, it's time to wind up our show and thank the Cosmic Kid for being with us. Cause it's been great having you around, but before I go, I want to play the record. Oh, Baron, I've loved every minute, and this song says it all. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, it tells of our long search and the arduous conditions we experience. But it has been a lot of fun, you know. We ain't found Sid yet. No one ever will, Baron, because he's invisible. Incredible. Hey, listeners, I can't say I understand it, but let's hear the song, The Sons of Sid with Where's Sid? Also running 